Hey everyone, well welcome back. Uh, we've been making some rather big improvements around here to our uh, outdoor wood boiler system and our radiant floor heating system. Basically, if you haven't checked out our other videos on our outdoor wood boiler we built one years ago, I'll put a uh, little link right up here and you can click on that and check it out. Make sure you come back and finish this video so you can learn about how the rest of the system works. Basically, what we have is we circulate hot water and the boiler makes the hot water, brings it in through this one inch pipe here and we run it through our circulator pumps and what we do is we draw the water through instead of push the water through. So we're pulling the water from the boiler then goes into a hot water heater. Okay, now originally I had this system set up where I was just running the hot water heater and would run the circulators and everything through the floor and upstairs and it was working, but I was spending a lot of money on propane. And well, this is going back uh, 16 years ago now. So I didn't want to spend all that money on propane, so we built the boiler and now the boiler supplements this. So what it does is the hot water comes in, goes in here, then back out through the whole system. Now, the cool thing about having it go into a hot water heater is when I go on vacation, all I do is I plug this in and I don't even have it plugged in right now. I mean, it just sits here ready to go and if I plug this in, if the temperature's low enough, it'll fire up and go. Basically, if it's a really cold night and I leave this in, sometimes in the winter I'll leave it plugged in and if I miss it and the boiler, the temperature drops, the water drops, this will kick on and heat the water up for that little bit and I, I hear it. It's like, oh man, I gotta get out there and put wood in the boiler. The system's calling for heat. So it is nice to have when you don't really wanna burn wood, but you know, the whole point of this is to not spend money on propane. So simple system, it goes up through here, through a check valve. It has an expansion tank. Now, when I originally did the system, I wasn't entirely sure if I was doing a pressurized system or a non-pressurized system. So I put the expansion tank in there and that was good as a closed system. Once I put the boiler in there, well, then it became a different story. Um, you're kind of counting on these right here, these pressure relief valves for everything. And with that outdoor wood boiler and a wood fire going in there, you kind of have a bomb in your yard. So you, you need to be able to have a way to release pressure. So I figured it was better to leave it as an open system. So no matter what it did, it, could, it never built pressure. If it got too hot, it would just boil away any water. And kind of neat if it neat does boil away all I have to do is this I turn that on and it runs direct feed right out there and fills the boiler up every once in a while you turn that on and run usually if I get the house nice and warm and I see that the temperature is gonna actually go up outside then I add more water to the system and it compensates for it it slowly heats that water up doesn't take such a surge out of the boiler but it does work uh, as long as you make sure you do keep an eye on it every once in a while adding it i've never run it dry if it starts to feel like you're not really getting too much heat then yes you probably need more water because you're cooling off that giant block of water that you have speaking of a giant block this concrete floor this is one giant block here it acts as a huge radiator basically the water flows through up through the system there to go upstairs and then it comes down as well to a whole set down here. So this runs down through the floor and back up again through here to this circulator where it meets up with the upstairs and then back out and down into the boiler. So it's kind of cool, this giant heat sink, once you heat it up, I mean, you get this floor 80 degrees, and you're in a t-shirt changing oil on your car and enjoying your stuff, everything in the house warms up to 80 degrees, not just the air itself. So it's kind of nice, uh, the floor upstairs runs through is a little tricky to get this to bleed i have a couple weird bleeders here as i was doing it i found this worked really well with these i could shut each line off and run everything through one line just with this as a hose and then shut it off so this line was completely filled then move to the next and the next and the next and then suck all that air out once i did that i was able to get it it was very tricky to bleed this at first kind of well, the whole system I had to figure out how to make it and put it together and add this and put in that but I got it to work and it's working really well we're making improvements today like we used to have uh, little clips that held these tubes to the ceiling and I stuck a couple pieces of aluminum in there and today we are upgrading to all of those aluminum trays right there that hold that and that should add a ton more heat so that helps put out more heat by reflecting that through it and sucking it out temperature wise now when this sucker's up and running i mean i like to have 100 
40 degrees coming through here and it's you know pretty darn hot you can still touch it and that runs through the system and then going back out oh man a little over 100 105 or so 110 seems to be the sweet spot for this system so you know you're really losing 30 degrees between what you're coming in and what you're going out that works nice now before when you're messing with this get yourself one of those infrared thermometers I had one from the RC cars. It was priceless for doing this because you could just hold it to each one of these tubes and it would tell you exactly what the temperature was of each tube and then the return water. So if all of a sudden this one's good, they're all good except these two are showing cold. So it's a real slow flow. So let's adjust this to balance it out and vice versa. What is my temperature coming in? Why isn't this working? What adjustments do you make? You hold it everywhere and you can tell the inlet and the outlet temperature instantly with a little thermometer. Really cool, super helpful for figuring out these systems. Ah, let's see, what else? I mean, this is a pretty primitive system here. Kind of thermostats here. It kicks on to this, which just turns on two circulator pumps. I only have, I don't even, I have one zone for the entire house, and you kind of control what you need for the temperature by these, and how much wood you throw in the boiler. Would it be nice to have more zones? Maybe, but through the years I've gotten pretty good at gauging what I really need as far as temperature controls. Another cool feature, this right here. I put this whole system on a plug. The main reason, when the power goes out, all I have to do is plug this into a generator and it runs two circulator pumps is all I need to have heat this house. And I'm good to go. And every once in a while you shut the system down, let it build some good heat in the water, and then just plug it in and she fires back up and away she roars so it makes heat pretty slick works very well um i don't really know what i would do different i know they've systems have come a little ways since this but it does work and it works really well i mean i'm in a t-shirt in my garage and i'm heating with wood so i don't have to pay for it so that's the best feature about it and again to be able to go away on vacation this hot water heater is well, water heater hot water heater whatever you want to call it i mean you're technically heating hot water hotter so it is a hot water heater as well but this is only good for six years and it's 20 years old so it's a power vent unit still running still awesome and to be able to go on vacation and not have to worry about your house you know it's good to go big key here is i don't run antifreeze in any of my lines so the boiler outside has to be circulating all the time and by being able to go away and leave this on, it's still putting water out into the boiler. Yes, I'm losing efficiency when I'm not here of heating a boiler that's not even running. But, big deal, it works and it keeps it alive and I don't have all that antifreeze to deal with and I don't have to completely shut the system down. Other features, I mean, I could put a heat exchanger in here. I have a big one that I'd kind of like to put with a blower. Plans have changed with the garage. Maybe I'll save that for a shop, use it another time. Yeah, I would say you have to check out our other videos because the, the ones on the boiler are really cool. The, we built this. I mean, it's a heck of a system to run this long and it's a lot of money saved. All right, well, here we are working in the shop. Well, what used to be the shop and is now going to be bedrooms. We need to make some room here. Basically, have a wall that's going to come in here, another one over there, another one over there. And in the process of that, we ripped down the ceiling and the insulation and now we're left with this so we have open bays and it's getting all cleaned out and changed we also have a little bit of life here those are our little baby ducks we hatched those out of that incubator kind of cool i'm a go figure amongst all this needless to say we figured let's make an improvement with the boiler this year because every year i try to make one little bit of an improvement with our heating system and then we have the outdoor wood boiler i'm sure check out our other videos on that that's pretty darn cool but uh this year what we're going to do is figuring we're going to be getting into the ceiling here well you can see that little metal piece right there that's covering that now that's just a piece of flashing so uh the principle behind that is here why don't you hold this a minute maybe you can help me here. let's see how i want to open this so by having those plates and i, I just stuck that flashing up there oh man 15 20 years ago this is what gave me the idea to do that so these particular plates here Oh, 
Look at all these. A whole bunch of aluminum plates. Now what's gonna happen is you run your right over top of your tube and uh, we'll staple these into the ceiling there. Actually, hold that again. Let me grab okay. one of these out of here. We'll go with this pack. I guess I got two of them. We'll pull two out for now. So that's using the same technology and principle as that, except for it's going to be a whole lot more area. So we're going to put these up on the ceiling. Probably, you know, as close together as we can. Run these out, probably three apiece going across, and then we'll get into the corners. And that's going to get warm and take a lot more of the heat out of our radiant floor heating in here. And pull the heat out of the water, heat up this metal, and that will transfer back up to the floor up above and add heat to the rest of the house so it'll make our system a little bit more efficient uh, these really weren't that expensive to buy I think they're like uh, oh, I don't even remember what they were two bucks a piece maybe something like that for all these but uh, if it makes a big difference in our heating system and we burn a lot less wood just because oh, we're using it more efficiently and we get more heat in the house well, that's what we're after. So every little bit of an improvement really helps. Uh, that's one thing we're gonna do this year. And then we're probably gonna put even better insulation up here than what was there. I know back then, 20 years ago, I used kind of what I could get my hands on. So I'm sure that will make the rooms a little warmer as well. Other than that, well, we have some work to do. So let me get at it and I'll show you in a second here what these look like as they're going up and what we do. So one big thing about your insulation is in this garage, the floor itself has radiant floor heating running through it as well. So this concrete floor acts as a giant heat sink, pushes a lot of heat into the house. With the pipes open like that, if I'm running the water through it, all the heat comes back down and nothing gets pushed up through the floor. So you really need a good layer of insulation on the floor so it pushes the heat further up into the room above you, or up and through the floor above you. Uh, it's a big deal and well you get good soundproofing out of it as well so you kind of look out for not having to hear all the sounds that, well it used to go down on the garage but now, i mean here you don't really hear anything from upstairs anymore but that's definitely a big perk and you can't cheap out on your insulation you really need it to be able to make your house work and heat properly especially if you have a heated floor below it all right we, well we are making real progress here and uh we're putting in these panels you can see what they look like nice aluminum Pex runs right through the middle there. Simple things. We have a bunch done up there and running all through this room. So we added this little bedroom here. Basically, I have it running everywhere up in these bays and now I'm re-insulating and moving right along. I'm gonna sheetrock this. Then we can start the other bays and get those done and well pull that down and do that. So well, it's getting there. So hope you like this. Check them out, Mr. Brian's Amazing World. You have a wonderful day and go outside and figure out what you can do. We built all this with hardly anything.